Okay, so let's talk a little bit about part design. Plastic parts are um, the foundation for the mold cavities. So we have to um, define what materials they are, and we'll bring that out in another subject on material science. But um, we want to be able to um, show how a part comes out of the mold. If it doesn't have a release design in it, then it can't get out of the mold, and it sticks, and you get parts stuck. So we start with some features that are very easy to remove. It's solid, the way we start designing. We start adding holes. They have draft on them, so um, you'll see us put that in in another section. And as we work through this part, we're gonna just keep moving forward, and there's little radiuses going in here, and then we pattern that. And as we move forward, we start thinking about, you know, what the backside looks like. So this is the backside, and it's got all these nice radiuses, so it'll pop out of the mold. And then we um, we keep charging forward. So as we as we move forward, we then um, go ahead and we do a shell routine, which all plastic parts need to be a consistent thickness. So whatever that thickness needs to be to to carry the loads and the support or the price. Sometimes price is is important to thin out the plastic and use less plastic. But we we do a shell operation. And we keep moving forward, and and for a mold operation, we um, tend to put surfaces on these holes to cap them so when we split the cavities um, it knows where to stop on each side so we did this thing and and then we just went all the way to the end and this is the part that will be used to split it and then we scale this up a percentage so nylon shrinks at about um, oh, 15 thousandths per inch which is i don't know three or four human hairs and um, th this part, um, we can get the weight on it and all that stuff to know how big of a molding machine we need. So this is basic part, 3D part design for moldability, whether it's a plastic part or a metal injection molding or all kinds of different materials that we can mold. Um, they basically follow the same rules. All right, let's talk about um, the mold itself. So this is um, what the part looks like and one side of the mold. So this is considered the B side or the ejector side. So we we have this ejector system down here that um, has all these pins that make these bosses. And what happens is, is that with all these ribs and features in here, the plastic's gonna wanna stick on this side of the mold. The other side um, is just, it's, a, it's a, a smooth surface. So we know that it's gonna stick to the core and we designed the part that way. These pins right here are called core pins. I don't know if you can see this little pink part down in here. Um, this is an ejector sleeve, so it strips the part off of here. And part of the mold is gonna shut off on here to create the through hole in our part cavity. So if we look at our, our connector here and we um, turn off all of the, um, whoops, all of these, uh, um, we turn off all the surfaces, we'll see that these holes go all the way through. So there's, there's a hole that goes all the way through. And we split the, the part. We want part of it to stick on this side of the mold. So we, we have that core pin come up here and then we strike on this, on this flat surface. So this is our ejection surface where that, it's called an ejector sleeve, we'll push this off. So let's go back to the mold and we'll look at the, um, the back side here. And so, so this core pin goes all the way through down into here so if we take a a section view and we we drive a section view through this thing and um we just start pulling it through and we start going through here and we go in and we and there there's an ejector pin and a sleeve right there so so the the pin goes all the way to the back here and it and it's stationary and then these are like they're referred to as um standoffs so it supports the cavity when the injection pressure comes in it's gonna to try to bend this steel and we wanna put some support under here or this whole mold will get broken apart by the, the injection pressure. And so then we come up here and then these pins just strike and, and, um, and strip the part off of these core pins here. So this is standard um, ejector sleeve core pin um, behavior. Sometimes we can do it where we, we bring the, the, the window all the way through and we stick it right here and we just, we don't need a core pin. We just eject it off of there and we strip the the part off. So we want to strike on a boss, which um, is all these things. So so if we if we now look at the other side of the tool, and we'll just hide this side right here, 
and we'll hide the ejector plates and we'll go into this right here and we'll hide that and we'll bring the hot side over. So, so the hot side is the injection side. So, so plastic comes in and, and the spherical nozzle butts up against here and it comes right through and it goes in and it, and it fills the cavity over here and we create this thing called a runner. So if we look at it from the bottom, you'll see this is a tapered hole. Everything's tapered to get the, this part freed. And so it's gonna get shot, the plastic's gonna get shot in and we like to aim it in the direction of the longest point that we're gonna to go to reach. So we're gonna to try to get the plastic all the way through and it's gonna weave through the cavity and it's gonna end up over here. So this is basically the hot side of the mold and this is the part when it pulls apart, everything will stay, it'll, it'll release the part because it's all rounded here and it's gonna stick the part to the other side of the mold. And this runner, we can make it stick to the other side. We, we put a pin in here that holds it. So, so if we um, turn these cavities back on and, um, and we look at these cavities and we, um, whoops, we go in and we create a section view and we, we're gonna go through here and we're going to go section view and we're gonna click on this and we're going to turn on everything and we're going to pull this through here all the way to the center and we come in here and this is the the center pin right here we can flip this over right up here in the corner and the plastic is is tapered so this runner will stick with this side of the mold and we put a little undercut here and then this ejector pin strikes that runner out and separates it from this part right here so that's that's the ejection side these are water lines here that cool the part. So we want to get as much cooling in here as possible. And these little connectors, we, we kind of route the wire, water through there and we, we run this, um, this water in and out. It goes down, it comes around, it comes out. And we have a big manifold that processes a lot of water at one time. So that is, um, that's the mold. And then this mold slips into a an assembly on the molding machine so you can drop it in and out very quickly and change change what you're processing so so the whole mold looks like this you've got a, a B side the ejector side and then you got the A side which is the hot side and these water temperatures sometimes run at different temperature speeds like nylon runs really hot we're processing nylon it runs at like 525 degrees Fahrenheit and so we want it to be hot for a little while and then we want to cool it down and that's a whole separate subject but there's there's our mold um, assembly and we're going to take you on to machining this mold and how we built it oh this is a hard stop so when we strike this back these back two plates forward these springs want to return them and we push up to this edge right here so this is this is a hard stop and our our ejector pins only pop out of the mold so far when we strike this forward and the springs if we don't put this in here, the, the springs will get crushed and they won't return. So we have to stop them with, they call that a hard stop. And there's two of them. So there's one, one down here and one down here. And then our striker bar comes in from the molding machine and it pushes these ejector pins forward. Okay, that's the mold. And um, we'll get into more details later. So here's Fusion. And um, we've got three stations that we're going to do. Um, we're going to Start the first uh, four surface, five surfaces, um, clean up the bottom, drill, run around the outside, and then um, we're gonna take out this slot here for clamping on this station over here. So this is G54, and let's play it. So um, this is a shell mill, and it's set up for aluminum, so um, it's moving pretty quick. And then we um, add the next program uh, it's going down to the final finish there and we'll just speed this up a little bit and here's the um, long uh, 20 millimeter diameter cutter going around the outer edge and it's going to clean up everything here and um, bring it to size so it does a couple finishing passes there and now we do the um, T slot all the way around and here's we're going in and we're center drilling all these holes that are for a um, certain type of drill and these are ejector pin holes, and these are the big um, holes for um, guide pins and things like that. So then we chamfer all the holes, and we walk around the outside with a chamfer, and we're done.
Okay, and now we're over to, this is referred to as G55. Uh, it's the second um, operation on this block. Um, it's just showing the, the raw material that's on the back side of the block. We've finished the other side, but this is the way it looks. So we're going to launch this, um, we're going to launch this uh, um, simulation. So we're going to walk around the outside edge, and it's going to clean up everything um, to nominal. And then we go ahead and we um, start roughing everything in. We're, we're using a ball end mill here. And um, this kind of does its own dance around here. We're going to leave some stock for the material that's going to become the cavity. So everything's walking in on the shape of this part. And um, it keeps going. And that's the, um, the roughing mode. And now we, we get a smaller um, tool that we're going to go in and, and um, get it even tighter. So you're going to see the shape getting... A little bit tighter here um, and we'll just keep going we're going to crank up the speed a little bit here and um, it just keeps finishing this is a long cutter path so it's going to really take some time here to to get through this this is going to run for like 12 hours and um, here we can just keep pulling it forward and adjusting the speed of the simulation and it'll get done here a little bit quicker so um, this is the core side of the mold and once we get done um, you can see that it's a little bit tighter resolution and it's coming in for a, fi a finish pass which um, and then we clean up all of the flat surfaces and um, that's that's what we've got going there and now we're going in for a final flat finish um, on this thing so let's see here still running I believe well anyhow you get the picture and, um, and then we go in and we clean up these bores here and things like that so we're, we're about there and uh, so now I'm gonna stop that so now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna um, go and, and bolt the block on here on this backside and um, we've got a couple dowel pins that line up a hole that was drilled and reamed on the first operation and, then, and there was some drilling and tapping on the 16 millimeter bolt we we pull the plate on here and um, we go ahead and run this simulation so I'm going to go simulate and um, and now this is going to start with a center drill routine and then um, you know slow it down this one's pretty pretty fast to do so I'm going to hit play and it goes in it does the center drill and then it drills this long deep um, waterline hole and then it cleans up the chamfers around here and um, we've got um, we've got this little engraving over here we're gonna do it on the next operation so I'm just gonna flip this over I'm gonna go to the next operation and I'm gonna um, I'm gonna light up this nope, not that one that one right there and I'm gonna simulate this guy right here and um, this one's a little bit longer so we're gonna we're going to put a mold number over here that will identify the, the um, part there. And so we have to machine a little pocket to, to locate it. And here we go. And so there's the numbers. And then we're going to drill the back side of this mold. And so now we have a through hole that goes all the way through to the other side. And it dodges all those ejector pins in the back. So these are water lines. And we'll come in and we'll tap them with a tapping tool. Um, and so there's the tapping tool and it does this little helical um, uh, thread it's a it's a pipe tap so it's it's got a taper on it and so you use this single point cutter here to do that and then we use a an engraving cutter over here to do the 2062 um, mold number but this is kind of finishing up this side and um, we'll end that now